Hey y'all, John here, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be doing another video on my infrastructure. So I just moved on Monday, and today's Wednesday, from my studio apartment to a bigger one bedroom in the same building. And um, I made some changes over time with my home lab. So of course we have a bigger server now, little things like that, but we'll talk about that in depth in this video. But the main thing, studio is getting cramped, having all the photography equipment, just the rack, just too much. So one bedroom, better. Should allow me to breathe a little bit more. So um, we're gonna jump over into the rack in just a bit and we'll start from the top. All right, so let's start with networking. So I'm gonna start at the top of the rack. At the very top, we have the UDM Pro um, and then we have the Switch 16 PoE. That PoE switch is connected into my AP and then the UDM also has two connections coming in. The first one is the fiber connection coming in from the apartment. They have basically, I think around 700 download and 900 upload. And then the second one, which I haven't really set up, is the AT&T LTE. That's a backup uh, failover connection. It's just there, because why not? And then I also have the Philips Hue switch powered by PoE by the Switch, the switch 16. Now, let's get to the other side, um, what you're actually looking at. This is a uh, PDU, and of course I have the UDM and the Switch 16 plugged into that. So that's what that looks like. Um, we also have a security camera. This is one of the G4 instant cameras. They run on Wi-Fi. And then of course I have some battery chargers sitting on top, no stress on that. And then below that, we actually have two micro PCs. These are just there for show. They're not in use. I just don't really want to hook them up. Um, we don't really have a use for them yet. And then below that, we have a Dell, not Dell, an HP Enterprise DL380 Gen 9. Um, this is kind of an older platform, um, but honestly, I got this at basically the price of free. So um, it has two, I think they're Xeon V4s. Um, they have two 12 core uh, CPUs. Um, they're hyper threaded, so 24, uh, 24 threads, all that. But yeah, two, two, uh, two 12 core CPUs. That's 384 gigs of RAM sitting inside. I have all the SAS, all the SAS uh, drives uh, populated. So I have two 200 gig solid state drives. Those are HP branded. And the rest of the six bays actually have the, I think they all have 1.2 ter yeah, terabyte SAS drives. And there's six of them. Those are in a RAID Z2. This is actually gonna be my soft, my not so software development slash dummy testing machine. So this is gonna be running on Proxmox. It's on right now. Don't know if you can hear it. Um, but yeah, that server is basically on all the time. And it's pretty quiet, which I'm kind of surprised by. Now below that, we have my main workhorse that I've been using for so long, the Dell Precision 7820, 64 gigs of RAM running Proxmox VE. This is actually running basically a super small AMD GPU and some networking stuff. I'm actually gonna be dis dismantling this rack just so I can show you what's inside of these machines. And then below that, we have basically a, uh, an, I think this is, a, I just call it an R740, but it's a DD3300. It's supposed to be one of those weird storage uh, machines for cameras. Um, this is gonna, this is my main photography server. So this has a Xeon bronze, uh, 192 gigs of RAM, only has one processor. Um, 10, gig, um, 10 gig ethernet is already on the NDC, so I don't really need to add another card. And then it has NVMe drives, SATA drives, two, redundant SATA drives for boot, and two redundant, I call it the tiered storage ideology. So I have NVMe, which is tier zero, which is my fastest. Tier one is my SATA SSDs, and tier two is my Seagate XL's 14 terabyte drives. And then at the very bottom, we have a UPS. So I got that for low price of free. I have two of those. Uh, only one is in the rack. That UPS uh, was really nice during my move. All I did was unplug my, my, uh, my WAN cable from the wall and my power uh, for the UPS and rolled it into the new apartment, and plugged it back in. So that's really nice for um, just for in case power goes out. And yeah, so I think I'm actually gonna move um, over to the rack. I'm gonna turn off all these servers. I'm gonna open them up just so I can show you what these look like. Um, hopefully that gives you some more insight on how I have them set up. All right, let's pull this thing apart. This is what my internals look like. As you can see, all my RAM slots are full and populated. 
and we only have the HP uh, quad uh, gigabit adapter in here. I'm actually thinking of adding in a SFP adapter, so I'm gonna do that now. Just installed a new SFP adapter just so I have it in a device. I don't have space for this in my 7820 anymore, so it's gonna be here until further notice. Let's get this back in the system. There we go. Now we're gonna hook up the HP system back up. Gotta connect the management and the power. All right, next system, Precision 7820. Let's get this boy unplugged. All right, this is my Precision 7820. Um, as you can see, we have 64 gigs of RAM. So 16, 16, 16, 16. We have the Radeon Pro WX, uh, what is this, 2100? Uh, Honestly, I don't really care much about this GPU. It's just there, just so I can connect an external monitor and get video. And then we have these are, I'll be honest, these are somewhat sketchy. I'm gonna pull one of them out so you can see it. If I can get it out, that is. All right, so these holders I got from Micro, from, uh, Micro Center. The SSDs I got from Amazon, this, a two bundle. These are 128 gig each. Um, these are basically set up in a RAID 1 and they're bas they basically mirror my boot volume, which is Proxmox, obviously. Um, so I have two of those, one and two. Let me get this reinstalled here. So we got redundant NVMe storage for the hypervisor. We have a 10 gigabit um, network card. This is super nice. I'm only running at one gig now, just because I don't really need my main Proxmox server to have 10 gig on it. So one gig it is. on the network side until I get an aggregation switch. Let's get this hooked back up here. That's in. And then the last card is a LSI SAS controller or HBA. Um, this is basically connected to all the devices in the front. Um, basically all those ports tie up to the front base and that entire PCI Express uh, card gets passed to TrueNAS on uh, Proxmox. I also pass through this on Proxmox as well. So basically passing through the HBA and the Ethernet card. And that's basically it for the 7820. So we're gonna get this reinstalled in the uh, rack here and we're gonna go from there. But actually we gotta pull out the uh, R740 first because this technically doesn't have its own supporting rail. All right, so this is the R740 XD. So as you can see, I have two redundant um, SATA SSDs. Um, this is for TrueNAS scale. There are, I think, 250, 256 gig SATA drives. And then we have two Evo drives from Samsung. These are one terabyte each. These are what I call the tier one storage. Um, tier zero is back there in the back. Um, these are both one terabyte RAID one. I can technically pull this off just so you can see what's going on. Don't want to stretch that too much. As you can see, I only have one processor installed. The other one is just empty. We have, I think, 192 gigs. So 16 uh, gig sticks in each slot, all ECC. Let's get this back on here. Let's see here. Close that down. And now I'm gonna show you the SSDs for the NVMe drives. All right, and here is my setup for SSDs. Now, again, this specific R740 can only do a by eight, um, can't do by 16, like the, like the uh, 7820 can. So I have two 970 EVO plus drives, 
in here. Uh, they're both one terabyte running in RAID 0. Um, RAID 1, not RAID 0, uh, for redundancy, just in case one drive fails, which is probably not going to happen, but it's there. Um, that's really all that is. So I know these are 970s. I think these are 870s. I think that's the, the term for these SATA drives. I forget. It's in TrueNAS. So I'll probably show you that later. Uh, so tier 0, tier 1, tier 2. These are tier 2. Um, these are just two 14 terabyte drives running in RAID 1 as well. Um, if I run out of storage, I'll be adding more of these SAS drives in my system. But not much to talk about on these. These work really well. They always have. And before I forget, I do have an APC that's just chilling out for now. Uh, not really much to talk about there. You can probably see it on the other camera. Just sitting here powering everything. So let's get this all back in here. Alrighty, rack is back together. Now we just have to wait for all the uh, ports to come up and I'll show you the unified dashboard. And then we'll load Proxmox and then we should be able to wrap up this video. All right, welcome to my dashboard. This is what my network looks like. I will say that I do have jumbo packets enabled on my UDM just for my photography NAS, just so I can increase that throughput by a little bit. So that helps. Um, here's my device list. So you can see everything else on my network. As you can see, I have a couple different VLANs. My default is my untagged network. I have a management VLAN and an IoT AirPlay network. IoT AirPlay is basically accessible from my untagged and my guest networks. I can talk to it, but it can't talk to me. So I'm just gonna keep this quick. Um, this, I have some ports assigned to different things just to keep things somewhat organized. So we're gonna jump to the first server. So that is the DL380. There is not much going on in here. As you can see, I have those E5 processors. Those are 12 core TPUs each. There's two of them, 384 gigs of RAM. And that's 377, that's basically what it is. This is basically going to be my development stuff. The main drawback, again, with this, I can't update the BIOS without a support contract. And I also cannot get like I, the equivalent is like iDrag Enterprise, like mount CDs and DVDs without a subscription, which I don't like with the iDrag. I can just buy it once and move on. But yeah, this is just going to be where my test software runs. Just stuff I'm playing around with because I have basically, in my head, unlimited RAM. Next server, the one that's most important to me, other than my photography server, is the Precision. So this is where basically everything runs. So this has, uh, what is it? The 5122. Eight threads is just the hyper threading that's kicking in. But 64 gigs of RAM runs my personal TrueNAS server. I am not running Home Assistant. Um, that has been running really well. I actually have all my Hue lights going through this now. So basically um, my Hue lights are powered by a PoE, uh, PoE injector. So I can reboot it anytime if it starts malfunctioning, but even HomeKit is talking to Home Assistant before it talks to the Hue bulbs. So it works really nice. Even uh, my Unify cameras are integrated in there. Paper Merge for DMS, I'm still working on that. Jellyfin is just connected to TrueNAS with an NFS backhaul. Image has been moved to the Gen 9. Thumbtack, I leave that off. That's just a way to keep my presence online. And image looks like I have it running, but it's probably running over NFS, but that's supposed to be running on the Gen 9, not on this. Now, TrueNAS. So we're actually gonna touch my personal TrueNAS scale server. So I'm gonna log back into this real quick, just to show you what this looks like. I actually have both of these running on Electric Eel right now, which is basically the latest update seems to be running really good so far 32 gigs of ram it's been up for a while as you can see i'll just show you my storage setup just two of those 14 terabyte drives nothing else going on of course trim is off because it's a hard drive not a solid state i need to probably get data deleted or upgrade the storage because i'm running out now for trueness now let's see here So this is my TrueNAS server. So this is the one with 192 gigs of RAM. As you can see, I have a couple different data sets here. So 14 terabyte drives. The, I think these are, let's see. Yep, those are the 870s. The 870s, and then I have the NVMe's. So all of those are running just fine. Got trim enabled on those. I got to set up the scrub tasks to work. Uh, something I really do like about TrueNAS is the fact that it can download on my Google Drive files onto my local storage just so they're backed up, quote unquote. Um, and then my share. So I want to be cool. Um, so I got the different tiers labeled T0, T1, T2. 
but yeah that's what that looks like and then this is running jumbo packets so we have the 10 to 100 the 1.3 running 9000 byte packets on the UDM and then I also have my MacBook running those jumbo packets as well connected to this on Wi-Fi there we go jumbo packets yay basically I take this Ethernet adapter and connect it to like clients every once in a while to connect to their one gig network because I don't have a really good supported uh, one gig NIC but yeah that's back to normal um, but yeah I don't have anything else running on top of this not even any apps it's literally just TrueNAS on the R740 I'm gonna shut this down because it's so loud and it's late so all right well server is off i hope you enjoyed this video feel free to leave a comment like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video thanks until next time